I'm here with Dave Katzmeyer from CNET and Jim Wilcox from Consumer Reports. Uh, we're continuing our conversation about uh, reviewing and how that impacts how you buy your next TV. Um, David, you pr pr uh, gave me the question uh, about the panel lottery. We've, we've heard about this where Samsung or any of the other companies may get their panel from one supplier or another, and that may in fact have a major impact on the quality of the image. How do you deal with that? Well, uh, the short answer is we don't yet. Uh, it's, it's extremely difficult to deal with because we really only, buy, only, only get one uh, review sample of each product that we're reviewing. So it's difficult uh, also from a user perspective because let's say I did get five or six different panels and figure out you know, which ones were which and, 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 and annotate the picture quality differences between them. How is a consumer actually going to go out and buy that particular panel because they have the same model number? So you know, that's really, a, it's an issue that you know, we really don't have a good answer for, but it's something that, that's happening I think more and more, especially in the mainstream and, and smaller screen sizes. Uh, I, I think a lot of different manufacturers are doing it because uh, there's just, they just go shopping for panels in Taiwan and China and figure out you know what, which ones are, are, are cheaper and are able to do that, and then they send reviewers like me, the best ones. Even if you do buy them, you run into this issue of how do you tell people to shop for them. So mm -hmm. I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah, one, of, one of the things I'll bring up, and I think that David probably agrees with this, is that you know anyone can source panels from anywhere, but what we found really is the processing. A lot of times, it really is differentiating the company. So you know, if they're, they're doing ups for if it's an ultra HD TV, how good is their upscaling? What's the video processing like? So even companies that are using the same panels often will find differences in performance. So you know, it's it's I think it's always been sort of a bizarre in 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 the sort of uh, you know caravan sense of people go out and they shop, and especially some brands don't actually make their own TVs. They're all they're doing is sourcing all their components, but. Um, in, increasingly, what we're seeing is really the video processing and the money that the companies are spending on, on how to make that image look great that's really differentiating it versus the panel itself. Mm -hmm. um, another question that you guys brought up to me uh, offline was uh, picture quality versus features and design. How much emphasis do you give to each of those uh, elements when you're doing a review? I mean, picture quality is clearly the uh, single most important thing in terms of um, you know our our reviews. Um, so you know we don't talk about the individual weightings that we do, but we do weight the different elements of a TV. And so the the thing that we basically are saying is that there are two things a TV has to do, and one is give you a great picture quality, or at least very good picture quality. And the other thing is decent sound. So it doesn't have to be you know a bombastic sort of cinema experience, you know, coming out of these tiny tiny speakers on your TV. But at least it has to be clear, legible, and do a decent job of reproducing. Um, TV shows, news broadcasts, things like that. Um, and then there are other things we take into account, everything from viewing angle to motion blur. Um, then we have menu uh, and interface um, valuations that we do on the TVs um, because increasingly as there's more content on that TV, how easy is it to get to it? How well is it organized? Um, is the remote control you know, user? Is it user friendly? Is it ergonomically? So there's all of these different factors that go into it and then sort of the secret sauce in terms of how we come out with an overall rating score based on all of those different elements. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, weight those elements? Uh, at CNET, there's, there's no secret sauce. We tell people on the website exactly what the weightings are. We do uh, design and features are significantly lower. They're about 25% total between them. Uh, picture quality is about 35%. And then uh, value is actually our largest rating, which is 40%. So we have a specific rating just for value. The idea is to convey to people, you know, A, you, you, anybody can buy a TV that's extremely expensive that performs really well. We want to try and give people as the best TV for the money. So if you can get uh, a really good TV that also scores really high in value, generally you're going to rise right to the top. And, and the math is pretty simple. Once you have those uh, weightings figured in, it's just a straight calculation from there to get the numeric rating, which in informs the, the number of stars, because everybody likes stars. <laughs> I know I do. Yeah. Did one thing? Yeah. Um, you know, and the one thing I do want to say is that you know, all of those things are scored. So you see the score for each of these things. And the idea is that for different people, different elements are going to be important. So if you know you're not going to... Um, uh, you know, add a soundbar system, maybe, maybe the sound quality is higher. So we'll give you the individual scores for all of those things, and then based on who you are as a user, you can value those things in your own way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about um, uh, the importance of, you mentioned this earlier in the, uh, in the panel, but I wanted to follow up a little bit, the importance of user comments on reviews. Uh, do they influence your reviewing in any way, or how, how does that uh, affect things? 
Uh, well, I'd, I'd like to expand that to just pretty much any sort of reader feedback, which can include email, it can include comments, it can include people walking up to me on the street and saying, hey, you were wrong. Uh, really, what, what I like to do is, is try and get, if there's, if there's a large consensus, for example, of telling me which TV I should be reviewing, that I missed one, and this is a really important TV, you should check it out, I'll take a good look at that, because these people generally know what they're doing. If a lot of them get together and say, you know, th this TV's worth looking at, I also, if, for example, I'll throw out there sometimes, like, hey, in, in, uh, impartial poll, or, you know, in formal poll, uh, you know, what do you guys think uh, I should review next? And, and, and they can tell me, and, and we can be really flexible about that on the internet. That's so great. I think that sort of feedback is really helpful, and it also gives people a sense of power because, you know what, they really are the ones that are spending the money on these things, and we're here to tell them, you know, again, to give them information. Yeah, yeah, it's great. How about, how do you uh, handle user feedback? Um, you know, I, I think to some degree, very similar to David, um, as I said, one of the things that we found that, that I, when we were starting to look at these and saying, you know, what happens if someone totally disagrees with our, our opinion is that very rarely are they performance-based differences. People don't say, oh, you said this TV was great and it sucks. Um, they're, they're saying, oh, well, we did this with the TV and it didn't respond properly. So we really look at it as providing us with some additional kinds of information. Some of it can be instructional in terms of, oh, you know, maybe we should pay, be paying more attention to this aspect of the TV. Um, like, David, like David said, maybe it's people writing in and saying, hey, you didn't review this TV yet. And um, even though we buy a lot of TVs, TVs, we may move it up on the list and say this looks like a high demand thing. So we really look at it as, as adding some anecdotal um, sort of uh, storyline to the TVs that, that we may ne not necessarily capture in all apps. Yeah. Well, great. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. All right.